This is a Reddit thread from three years ago discussing AI imagery, and this user says, Imagine in a few years when we can make photorealistic videos from just a few sentences. AI is crazy. The post gets downvoted hard, and this reply comment laughs at him, saying that it's not going to happen in our lifetime. Our great-grandkids might have such technology, but not us. Well, three years later, and it's here. It is a beautiful drone shot, the kind of video that you might see in a travel video, right? Except it's not real. There is no drone. There is no camera. You can't travel because the video was generated by AI. It's from a new tool just announced a few hours ago by OpenAI called Sora. All it takes is typing in a short text, a prompt, and in minutes, it spits out a 60-second video clip of pretty much anything you can imagine. Now, Sora might not be perfect at this moment, but it's a large step up from what we've seen before. What most people don't know is that Sora can do more than just create videos from scratch. It can combine separate videos into one scene, animate still images, modify non-AI videos, and much more, which we'll get into later in this video. We're going to split this video into two parts. The first is what Sora can do, how Google accidentally made this possible. And part two will be on the implications for society and some solutions to the problems that may arise from this. So first up, what can OpenAI's newest model do? I'll show some examples, including some newer ones that have just been released by those with early access. Note that all the cutscenes, camera angles, movement are all quote-unquote creative choices of the AI. Videos can be up to a minute long and in 1080p resolution. Okay, so cool, it makes videos. But to understand the context here, as Marcus Brownlee pointed out, this is a viral clip of where text AI video was a year ago. The difference between Sora and the previous text-to-video tools is huge. With Sora, objects remain stable even when obscured by things in the foreground. It's a much more robust system. What's new about Sora is its ability to combine two videos together in one scene. It can also simultaneously make up different camera angles of a single scene with just one prompt. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so how did they do it? Well, not going to spend much time here, but basically, Sora is based on similar tech to OpenAI's GPT-3. Google's involvement in how Sora was built is kind of interesting. Back in 2017, Google invented something called a transformer architecture, and they published their findings on it. You don't need to know exactly what that means, but a transformer is basically something that makes AI better at generating text. OpenAI built on Google's tech to create their own text models. The adventure result was ChatGPT, but later on, Google noticed something strange. They modified the transformer not just to define patterns in text, but patterns in videos too, and it worked really well. OpenAI saw that and started working on the idea. After some tinkering, they released Sora. Now the question is, how was Sora trained? Right now, there's no public info on the training data. But OpenAI did partner with Shutterstock last year, so there's a wealth of copyright-free data for their AI to chew on. And that might be a clue for how Sora was trained. So this is cool and all, but before we get ahead of ourselves, what are some limitations? While these videos look good, aside from the cherry-picked examples and a handful of selected public users, we can't get a full grasp of how robust the system is. And I do want to stress that point. We don't know the full picture of its capabilities. Although I have to say, even the failures look cool. Its creators say Sora has trouble distinguishing between left and right, and also struggles with some logical concepts and cause and effect relationships. For example, this chair morphing from the sand and subsequently floating, it's a complete failure. But it is still cool in a surrealist way, in my opinion. Another limitation is that for now, to generate such videos requires huge compute power, so Sora isn't perfect. But if we extrapolate a couple of years and the failure rate of unrealistic outputs drops, what then? And what happens when this technology becomes democratized beyond the boundaries of just open AI? You've all probably thought of some implications of this. The first one that comes to mind is misinformation and fake news. People using AI to create events that never happened. We've already seen this with AI images when they were brand new. But if it's video, would there be issues with law enforcement? Forensic video experts may face challenges in distinguishing between genuine and fabricated or modified video evidence. Criminals may also deny video evidence, 
they could claim that the implicating footage was AI-generated. These issues require the development of new standards for verifying video authenticity. I'll expand on this in a second, but on the positive side, tools like Sora make it easier for creators to tell stories. Videographers might be sweating because it gives a similar capacity to those who have never picked up a camera. For those working in visual graphics industry, tools like Sora could kill their jobs in the coming years because every visual media, anything you can imagine, can be done easily with AI now. This is already happening. There are people on X posting a 2011 Bollywood movie and calling it a Sora video. It's going viral and has some people confused. Love or hate the movie. But these scenes were the hard work of a production team and crew. And now people just think that it was just some guy on computer that typed a few sentences and produced it. We're just not that impressed anymore. The number one thought people could have is, isn't that just AI? Imagine doing all of that hard work for people just to think, once again, that you just sat at a computer and typed in some prompts. In the next two to five years in the future when this tech will become trivial, along with AI fatigue comes the further erosion of trust. For example, in journalism and media production, while a tool like Sora can enable faster and cheaper video creation, it may also challenge traditional notions of authenticity and trust in media. A simple website or app will be able to generate photorealistic videos for you. When it's democratized, there's going to be a lot of people that use it for nefarious reasons. And just like deep fakes before it, there's a potential for chaos. And don't even get me started on scammers, they're going to have a field day with this. They could create adverts for products that don't exist, investment opportunities for things that don't exist, and many other different kinds of scams. All social media platforms will be flooded with trashy AI-generated videos. TikTok has already started issuing warnings to viewers when a video might be AI-generated. But how does it know? When a user uploads an AI video, they have the option to tag it. Now, normally this wouldn't work very well, and you'd miss a whole bunch, but here's where the clever part comes in. The hope is that there's enough honest labels on these AI videos that you can train another AI to learn to distinguish and learn the patterns of what makes an AI video look like an AI video. And it's eventually going to do that better than any human could. If it's actually going to work or not is another question. But regardless, I think we need some kind of automatic AI detection to be built into all social media platforms. This is simply so AI-generated videos don't even get the chance to start to spread. Here's another video making rounds on the internet, a comparison of this tech with one-year difference. So overall, we shouldn't be too negative. At the end of the day, this is an amazing tool with countless applications. At the time of uploading this video, Sora is not publicly available and is only accessible to a small group of researchers and creative professionals for feedback and testing. But this containment isn't going to last. To avoid a world where we have no idea what's real or not, we need to start working on robust detection systems built into the very platforms where these videos spread. So this is it for today's video. See you again next week with another video.